Hey guys, per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So, the long-awaited, better-known indicator, William's Fractal video, is here with you now, pulsing into your eardrums. So you may have heard me talk about this a few times for months. I haven't released a video about this, but uh, a lot of people are asking me about it, so let's do a separate video. What I use it for is stop losses. You can use it for many things, but that's what I use it for. Just some background. There's this guy, Bill Williams. He's got a bunch of stuff. I'll provide this doc and the link in the description below. You can read all about it if you're so inclined. I haven't read this doc. I don't think you need to, to get what I'm talking about, but everyone's always asking me for reading material, so... This is cool. A bunch of stuff. Uh, fractals is what you want to focus on. Uh, some people use this. I'll probably talk about this at some point. But he's talked about a lot of stuff. I think famously he does this alligator EMA thing. I haven't used it, but you can imagine what it is. It's EMA crosses basically with like five at a time or something. So what do I learn about fractals? Uh, Chaos Trader. I'll Again, I'll post this all in the description. Anything I've ever learned about Ichi has always been Chaos Trader driven. So follow him on uh, YouTube. He's, he's great. He explains stuff really well. Two videos on this. Just ignore his sales pitch. I don't, I don't think you need it. That's just me. So how do we add the fractal indicator to the chart? So you want to go to indicators. You just type in FR. It'll pop up Williams Fractals. Okay. Click on that. And it'll just show up as fractal. Now this isn't like fractal that you might be thinking of like uh, a repeating pattern. You know, it's, 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 it's a repeating pattern on a micro level. So if you want to format this, I typically make these brighter just so I can see them a little easier. If you want to change colors, you can. Kind of like the three drive name, like bearish three drives, bullish three drives. It's kind of a misnomer. So when you get a low, high, low, that's a, actually a bearish fractal. And when you get a high, low, high, that's actually a bullish fractal, even though it's green. Uh, green versus red. If you're red, green, colorblind, obviously change that. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Point is, if it's if it's underneath the candle, it's bullish. If it's above, it's bearish. The colors can be whatever you want them to be. Uh, so that's the general idea of the structure. I also like to make these a little bigger. Again, just so they're easier to see. That might be too big, but you get the point. Uh, you know, you don't want to miss these. They're easy to not to see if you've got a lot of stuff on your chart. So make them big, make them bold, make them beautiful. Make them a color that makes sense to you. Now, I've actually described fractals a little bit in a Brave New Coin article. I'll link that up. Uh, so let's talk about how I use it, what I do with Ichi specifically. If you've ever followed me on one broker, it, this is actually really easy to do and understand as it's happening. So it might not make sense currently because you have to sort of do it as you're going, but as in move the stop up or move the stop down, depending on if you're in a long or a short. And you can always front run these signals. So these are going to be lagging. It's going to happen at, after the fourth candle close. So if you get a high-low high, you're going to need two more candles before uh, it prints on the chart. So this is, this is just one example. Let's say you go long anywhere in here and you finally decide this is where I want to go long. There was a breakout after a retest of the cloud even though all the signals aren't there yet. Kuma breakout, bull, let's look for longs, let's open a trade, great. How do we know where do we put, where do we put our stop? What do we do? Uh, well, as soon as we open the long, we can look immediately to this candle. You can see there's a fractal there. So that's the level for the stop. As we're going up, you can see we get more fractals and these take time to print. And you'll notice, you know, we've got, so this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, almost two weeks before we get another candle print, okay? If you're on higher time frames, those signals will always beat low time frame signals. You're going to get more signals on a lower time frame. And I'll show you what that looks like four hour versus daily for Ethereum. But in this case, in most cases, the daily signals, especially the stops, will not fake you out, will not stop you out too soon. If you are on the four hour and you move down to the 30 minute, there's a high risk you're going to get stopped out way too soon with fractals. That's probably the first, the biggest mistake you can make is opening it on a high time frame looking way way down at the fractals and saying oh i gotta keep moving my stops no you gotta be patient you know it, it's it, it's agonizing at times it's excruciating you know there's all this happening for two weeks and then a drop there's no there's no fractal right so this fractal wasn't even here uh, when this happened which again this is why this is hard to talk about or see as it already happened uh, much easier to see and wait on it as it's happening so you know you're in at uh 4k and your stop is at 450, 4050, 
You're not getting another stop until up here. So you're not doing anything for two plus weeks. And then you're moving your stop up to 4,100, okay? And you can always front run it. So this is, a, this is an example. Uh, I can tell this is going to be a high-low high situation. So there's likely going to be a fractal there. So you, you're always, you know, more than welcome to front run these signals if you know what you're looking at. Another option is to go to Heiken Ashi. I won't talk about this that on this video, but if you're not sure, just move it to the wick. Move it up to the wick. That's always okay. It's always okay. So here's a, a great example of currently what's happening Ethereum, okay? I was talking about this for weeks, ascending triangle, it's going to go up, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It did. Cloud signals are there. Bollinger Band was there. You know, you get in down here at 350 or 320 or wherever. So you're in down here. Your stops are back here below 285. Usually, in this case, it's 285, something like that. But you can see how messy these get when things are sideways. These aren't a sideways stop loss, non-trending indicator. You don't want to use these like the cloud. Things are flat. Usually there's a pattern, there's volume to tell you something's going on. Uh, generally don't want to be in and out of trades quickly when things are consolidating. Uh, you know, if it's ranging, that's fine. But if it's just sideways, that's not for me. And you do you, but fractal stop losses aren't going to help you here. They're just too noisy. Things are too sideways. So finally we get some momentum, we get some movement. Here's the stop loss. Great. Uh, and you can see we don't get a stop loss this whole time. And again, excruciating, agonizing things. Are, Bitcoin's dropping by, you know, 20% a day. And Ethereum, you're losing out on everything. You know, if you got in at 400 or something, uh, you're losing all that on leverage, blah, blah, blah. So you have to wait. You have to be super patient. Uh, as soon as this prints, then it's always safe to move your stop up and check it, you know, a few days later. In this case, again, you got to be super patient with these on high time frames. You can always move the four hour. I'll show you what that looked like and why you would have been screwed, but you're always welcome to do that. So there's that stuff. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see the other thing. If you know about uh, support resist zones, retests, pullbacks, uh, this was bound to retest almost always on patterns. You get a retest of the resistance turn support or support turn resistance. You get a recheck there. So, you know, this is hindsight at this point, but it was coming anyway, based on that principle. And it was perfectly fine within the zone of uh, realm of possibility here. It basically went back to all time high as a retest. Okay, so this is four hour. I talked about this on Twitter. This is a four hour look like. So, you know, I was in somewhere down here and uh, that's great, whatever. Uh, you know, you don't get another fractal stop till here. So your stop is like 399 or whatever this is, okay? And great, it's at 460. But if we look at that on this, on the four hour, you can see we're getting, uh, this was this uh, 399 stop. We're getting this fractal all the way up here, which is great. But then you're almost immediately out of the trade a few candles later. That's fine. In this case, uh, you know, it didn't go much higher. It definitely went lower, depending on how you want to look at this. Uh, you got out in time. Uh, you got out basically 450 instead of wherever else you might have gotten out based on panic, you know. It's really hard for me to say what you use as stop losses, your leverage, your exchange. That all influences this for me. This was a stop loss you would have gotten out on the four hour. On the daily, you're still in because, you know, this was your stop when you open the trade. This is the next stop currently. So everything's kosher. There's nothing stopping you out currently. You know, the stop is at 385 or whatever it is currently, and you're good to go. So the idea with these stop losses is you shouldn't be breaking fractals of the opposite inclination as you're in a trend, trending trade, if you will. So I shouldn't be breaking bull fractals while I'm trying to go up. That's why you're getting, it's telling you to close the trade. It's typically very accurate. And the reason you need this and not just cloud exits or whatever else kind of exits is because, as many people say, with crypto, it's stairs up, elevator down. Things happen very quickly when they pull back and you don't want to be trying to sell when people, when everyone else is trying to sell. You want to be selling, you, your stuff wants to be on the book, ready to go, should crap hit the fan, okay? So that was four hour. Now let's look at Bitcoin daily, some examples again. Much easier to see once you know what you're doing. Once you do it once, it's it's really easy, I promise. You, you just got to do it once for yourself on a high time frame. Kind of like using the cloud a few times. This is even easier than using the cloud in my mind. But So let's say you had another entry down here. I don't care where it was. You know, if it was down, it was over here, whatever. I'm just pointing at this because it was a 
TK cross, price above the cloud situation. So you're long, that's your stop, great. You're holding your stop this whole time, you're holding, 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 you're doing nothing but sitting on your hands, not moving your stop up, absolutely nothing, until, you know, two candles after this candle, you're moving your previous stop from 1075, something like that, up to 1500, okay? Then you sit on your hands some more, you do nothing, you don't panic when you get this massive pullback, you do absolutely nothing. You can add on the Kijun bounce. That's a separate strategy, but you can always add there <laughs> uh, because it's a Kijun bounce. And then two candles later, you're moving your stop up to 1900. Okay. And then you're sitting on your hands. You're doing nothing. You're holding, you're holding, holding, holding. And this fractal will print somewhere in here on the, by this candle. And then when this pulls back, you're out of the trade at 2600, let's say. So you're safely in based on cloud around 1100, 1075, and you're out based on fractals before the cloud exit, which would be over here, uh, before the cloud exit, on the same time frame at 2600. That's the key. You're only using one time frame here. You can always go lower, but I'm saying I'm I'm entering based on the cloud here. I'm moving the stops up, up, up. I'm adding on the key June bounce if you want. As soon as the stops get me out, I'm out. That's it. You're out until cloud tells you to get back in, which may happen on the key June bounce. You know, you don't know what the right side of the chart looks like if you're trading this actively so again it's hard to see what i'm trying to talk about unless you do it a few times but even then if you get back in on the kijun bounce here your stops here your stops here and then you're out here you know it's not a huge trade but it gets you out safely let's go through another example so again maybe you're in on this kumo breakout maybe you're in on this tk cross whatever it is your stops are either here here or here in any case perfectly fine you're just holding moving the stop up you're not getting faked out at any point here there's no subjectivity with this that's the other thing it's automatically on the chart, which is why I use cloud. I'm lazy. I don't want to draw stuff. I just want to see it and do something. I just want super high actionability probability. So like I said, we're in, we're, we're holding, we're holding, we're being great traders, we're sitting on our hands, we're not panicking, and we're not pa trying to panic close on this. Here we get a wick uh, on this candle. You know, th this will print. You can always move it up. If the wick's long enough, again, you can move it up. Don't be afraid to, to you know, once you know what you're doing, to do that. Uh, once you see the high, low, high, and it's based on the wicks, not the bodies, that's important to realize as well. So you get a wick there, you move your stop to 3,900, your entry was around whatever, 22, 24, doesn't matter, and then you get stopped out on this wick. That can happen, and it can go higher on you, but you'll notice that was actually an okay exit. Uh, this isn't about getting the top, the very top. For me personally, I could care less about that. I just want the 80% in the middle. I don't care about the 20%, uh, the 10% on the top or bottom. So this prevents the FOMO in you from re-entering here. You know, you can always re-enter on whatever you want. You would have gotten stopped out again and then again. And that's telling you, uh, you know, get out. So depending on if you're back in on the key June bounce, you know, maybe you're still in. You can still ride this sucker up. I didn't draw it out, but... Those are all perfectly fine for the next trade. So you can see there's a TK cross here with price above the cloud again. So here we are. You know, maybe you're not in on the Kijun bounce. Maybe you're out, whatever. Your re entry is at 4,300 or 4,400, 4,500, whatever. Stop is here. You're holding, 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 being a good trader, not panic closing at the all time high level. And great. We get this nasty wick, nasty candle. You should be able to see that and say, okay, on the daily, I move up my stop to that level even before it prints you know it's going to print here but you can always move it up and then you know you're, you're thinking oh god it's, it's going to go down i'm going to get stop run again and sure, sure enough it doesn't you know it holds it holds and it takes you all the way up to 7200 whatever this is it doesn't matter again that's a massive trade there it gets you out maybe too early you know it really depends but it's a it's a safe trade it's a great trade and again it's a key June bounce situation maybe you're back in here and uh you're holding, holding, holding. Here's the current stop at 9K. That's what it looks like. You know, so if you would have moved your stop early on this wick, you would have gotten stopped out on the next day. That's why it's, again, patience, patience, patience with this indicator. You have to let it do its magic. Let it do its thing. I just, as, as hard as it is, admittedly, it is very hard to do this. Let it do its thing. You know, it took me a while to believe in the cloud and enter when things did not look enterable uh, at all for instance on this um 
this Ethereum chart, you know, I was in way down here based on cloud signals. That was before the setting triangle broke, definitely. That was before even B bands, I think. So it takes a while to, to trust that. And it's going to take you a while to trust this. You may get burned once or twice, but I'm telling you, it's going to be profitable. It's going to be worth it more than it's not worth it. All right, so let me know what you think. Read up on that stuff. If you got anything to add, let me know. I'm always looking to learn more. Uh, like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter and Telegram. And happy trading.